there's nothing to eat anymore. That's one of the most frequent comments that I see. And I completely understand this frustration. There are a lot of great food items sitting right next to comparable items with extremely questionable ingredients. And it's sometimes extremely difficult to navigate this supermarket jungle and to pick out the good foods from the unhealthy ones. So we're going to go today through the aisles of this Ralph supermarket here and pick out the best choices from each aisle for regular food items that we kind of use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, we have to check the labels and understand what ingredients or production processes we should avoid. And while sometimes the healthier choices can be more expensive, this is not always the case. So let's go and check it out. And we're starting in the bread aisle. Now, I don't currently eat bread, but a lot of people do. I think it's a staple of many people's diet. Unfortunately, our regular uh, American wheat is not very good. This was hybridized in the 1950s, has a very high gluten content. And then we process the crap out of this stuff and we fortify it with things and we add synthetic vitamins in there. If it's not organic, it's definitely straight with glyphosate. So this is a very bad example of bread that I would not buy, Wonder Bread. And uh, you will see here, it's not going to say organic anywhere, unfortunately. So this means it is sprayed. And uh, it's just going just to say enriched flour. We're going to focus in here. Unbleached enriched flour. So definitely stay away from that. It also, unfortunately, has something uh, like soybean oil in there, which is another ingredient I would definitely avoid. All the seed oils should not be in there. A lot of times there's potassium bromate in these breads. So really it's something to avoid. So better choices would be uh, breads that have uh, been made from organic uh, whole wheat. That's actually a much better choice. That means it's not sprayed and, you know, it's uh, much better in terms of nutrient content. Still the same. Unfortunately, it's the same wheat, still high gluten content. So Dave's Killer Bread is a pretty good choice. Ralph's has this. Uh, many other um, stores will carry this. And this is made from organic uh, whole wheat. So this is significantly better. It's not sprouted. And I'll talk about that in a second. As you can see here, organic uh, whole wheat. Um, it does have all the uh, organic seeds in there. Uh, all the ingredients here look pretty good. They do add some sugar, unfortunately, which I don't like. So there definitely are a few things in there that I would not agree with. So the uh, carb content is fairly high. It's not sprouted. And again, same here. The wheat is the same um, wheat that we use in most breads in the U.S. Not a great wheat, in my opinion. In Europe, they use a soft wheat. That's much, much better. Here's uh, Simple Truth Organic. That's a Ralph's brand. I like this one a lot, actually. Also, um, organic whole wheat, um, very good ingredients. It's a bit cheaper than Dave's Killer Bird. Dave's Killer Bird's on the very expensive side, obviously. But uh, if you if you read organic whole wheat flour like this one here, that's usually good to go. I mean, then you have um, all the other, uh, there's buckwheat in there and it's all organic. So I think that's actually pretty good. Palm oil, I don't like any oils in my bread. They don't have to put it in there here, they did. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that, at least it's organic. But this is definitely good to go. So these two choices, either Dave's Killer Bread or um, this one here, the Ralph's brand, the Simple Truth Organic, I think are fine choices. Sprouted bread would be better. I didn't find it. This is actually not Ralph's. And I cut this in to show you. This is called Silver Hills. Very good. This is sprouted uh, uh, bread. This is made from uh, organic uh, whole wheat and some other organic flours. And um, this is fantastic. It uh, has a very good taste. Some people like it better than the Ezekiel bread, as you can see, organic sprouted grains. Um, and then uh, basically everything in here is organic. Uh, great one. I think this is a very good bread and it tastes uh, very good as well. Then we're going to vital. Yeah, this is this part I don't like on this bread. Vital wheat gluten. Why do they add it in there? It's just extra extra gluten we don't need. Also very good bread is the Ezekiel. And now this one here, some people don't like the taste of it. It is sprouted um, a whole uh, wheat, but it also has uh, some legumes in there and some people don't like it. But again, for me, that's not a good choice. I don't eat it personally right now, but if you eat bread, these two are very good choices. And for some reason, we're jumping straight to the hot dog aisle. Now, I don't eat hot dogs, my kids do. And if I buy them, I at least go for natural, uh, which is less processed. You're not gonna have uh, so much nitrites in there and all these things. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. Angus beef, water. I mean, and of course, you get just a few things that are not so bad. In my opinion, like celery juice and paprika, sea salt. However, this is the worst beef that you can buy. There might be microplastics in there. So I wouldn't eat this all the time. But, you know, again, when you're buying for a family uh, with children and if they eat hot dogs once in a while, this is an okay choice, in my opinion. Um, the stuff I would not buy is really processed. Yeah, like this one, Bologna. We don't even know. Let's see on the label here. Horribly. Mechanically separated chicken, pork, and there's corn syrup in there. It's disgusting. Um, of course, potassium chloride. Um, they have got um, sodium benzoid. A bunch of stuff in there. There's nitrites in there. So this I would really avoid. This is crap. I mean, this. if you thought the hot dogs were pretty bad, this is a lot worse. And the hot dogs, again, are like a maybe. Now, this is a staple of my diet. A lot of people eat this. 
which is um, just turkey breast. Um, can't go too wrong with that. I would go with the cheaper brands here. You can get better brands. But if you see this, just, you know, turkey breast, they do have carrageenan here in caramel color. That's on the outside of it. And you can get some other flavors that don't have that. Uh, this, this is minimal. And it says they're less than 2%. I would argue it's a lot less than that, actually. So I think this is fine. Lunch meat's great. When you look at this, high protein, it is uh, low carb and low fat. This is a great staple um, when you have this for your breakfast, for example. Um, that's something I have every day. Peanut butter, of course, um, especially when you have children, you have it or also for yourself sometimes. Now, the problem is a lot of times they mix them with seed oils to prevent them from separating, and it has to be organic. Now, peanuts grow underground. Any pesticides, herbicides seep into the ground, they go into the peanuts, so only organic. So this is, again, the Ralph's brand. You see here, organic peanuts, very good. It does have palm oil, which I don't like, but they have to put this in there in order for, this, for the oil not to separate on top. And then some people don't like to eat it. There's a small amount in there. I'm okay with it. Everything else is organic. I think this is a fine choice. It's a compromise a bit. But, you know, for my kids, they will not eat the peanut butter with the oil separated on top. For some reason... And we're in the bacon aisle here. Now, uh, bacon, of course, not great. Oscar Myers is probably one of the worst ones. I'm picking that out right now to show you what not to buy because it will have, you know, nitrites and some additives that are not very good. Bacon, you know, once in a while I think is fine. I eat it probably once a week or so. Um, pork is not great because we feed it corn and soy and that concentrates in the meat but as you can see here you have um, sodium phosphate sodium nitrite in here so two things that should not be added to your bacon there's no need for this really so i would avoid that if you eat bacon i would get, go with something that's a bit cleaner than that um, so again the, the cheap oscar Mayer brand is not great here coleman this seemed to be pretty good uh, let's flip this over that's a bit more natural and when we look at the ingredients here you're going to see they're going to put less preservatives in there and i like that First of all, raised without, without antibiotics, fantastic. A bit of brown sugar, of course, sea salt, and celery powder. So there's no nitrates in there. This is a better bacon, a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it when it comes to this. Um, again, once a week, I think is fine. Um, it's not the best fat. Uh, I don't mind it other than that. I think it can be a staple of a normal weekend breakfast or something like that. Oh, of course, now here in the salsa aisle. Now, salsas, <clears throat> again, very natural ingredients. You have tomatoes and all that. The problem is... If it's not organic, it's an issue. I didn't find any organic in this aisle. I found something that I liked, but it wasn't organic. No, La Victoria, I thought it was okay. Um, but when you see this, it says, just says tomatoes. It doesn't say organic tomatoes. And therefore, this will be sprayed with um, pesticides and herbicides and will end up in your food. So I don't like that very much. Also, it will have a thickener called xanthan gum. Now, that's debatable how bad that is. It's in some protein powders. It just makes the food thicker. All in all, not bad. I would buy that one, the La Victoria. I thought that was okay. And then uh, Pace um, is one that's very popular, of course. It's a big company. Um, tastes very good. I've, I've bought this in the past. One reason I don't buy this anymore, I'll show you in a second here. Again, also, first of all, not organic, just crushed tomatoes, not organic tomatoes. And then here, natural flavoring. Now, that is a big lie. There's nothing natural about those flavorings. They put a lot of chemicals in there. You only have to start with a natural ingredient. So anything that says natural flavors, I would definitely avoid. Look at the price here, $4.49. Now, here's the cheap Ralph's brand. Kroger is actually the cheap Ralph's brand, not the good Ralph's brand, but the cheap one. Uh, one that I would avoid here too, of course, not organic. None of them were, I think. I didn't find organic uh, uh, preparations here, but let's see. A crushed tomatoes, of course, not organic. Dried garlic, and of course, again, natural flavor. So I would not buy that. I think this is just a junk. You're going to have pesticides, herbicides, and some chemicals you don't want to want to really use. I would get a better one so, or, or make your own. Get some good organic tomatoes and some you know, cilantro and all these things that could work. Ketchup, um, not great for us, but you know, uh, life's better with ketchup. The simple truth, I think, is good because it is an organic ketchup. So here again, we're going to have organic tomatoes. And I like this ketchup. Um, not a great food, but, you know, when we go shopping, that's one of the things we usually pick up. See here, organic uh, tomatoes, very good. And all the other ingredients are organic as well. So this is a great one to use. There's some sugar in there. And it's, again, you know, you just make make your life a bit better with ketchup. It, there's nothing nutritious about it, but it's good to have. And if you get it, that's what I would probably buy there. So this uh, Ralph's brand is actually pretty good, the simple truth. Beans. Um, now, <clears throat> beans, again, growing on the ground. You need some, uh, you need organic, and I didn't find it. I sometimes use refried beans like these ones, and they're definitely not organic, so I'm not happy about that. They're cheap, though, and so I do pick them up, and they do have, unfortunately, also natural flavors. So this is not a great uh, one. Just cooked beans and then you know, lard, all that I'm fine with, but the natural flavor, that's chemicals. You have it in there. Um, I didn't find any other refried beans, so that's my usual go-to. But then I also usually pick up, again, from this company here, Simple uh, Truth Organic, kidney beans. And these are great. So 
These are organic beans. <clears throat> Again, very important here because stuff will seep in from the ground and it will s uh, sit in your beans and you will eat otherwise. Um, chemicals, see, organic, dark red kidney beans, water, sea salt, very simple, and it's fairly cheap, actually. They really ki try to keep this brand very cheap, and I like that a lot. Tomato sauce, now when you make pasta, any of those dishes, I think this is fantastic, very important to do. Um, again, here, their traditional brand they have at Ralph's, the Simple Truth Organic, is very good. They do use, actually, extra virgin olive oil, and you have to read the label. Many of them don't use um, olive oil, but they use um, soybean oil, which is horrible. But everything organic in here, organic tomatoes, organic tomato paste, and you see organic extra virgin olive oil, which is absolutely fantastic. So I think this is a really, really um, a good one here, and um, I think this is definitely worth buying. And uh, all the other spices in there, I'm fine with everything that's in there, actually. In there, I, I buy this quite a bit. It actually ends up in a lot of my dishes uh, and chili and other things as well. So I think it's a pretty good brand. Now here is a cheaper brand, as you can see, a two dollar seventy nine for ragu. But you'll see the difference in ingredients. They do not use organic tomatoes, obviously, just says tomato puree and diced tomatoes. And when you look at the very end of that label, what does it say? They are natural flavors. So those are chemicals. I would definitely stay away from that. This is crap. Um, it is cheaper, yes. Uh, but not worth it. And you're going to have just regular olive oil. It's not extra virgin olive oil. So it's not the first press, but they usually use extractants to get the rest of the oil out. This is a very low quality olive oil in there, low quality ingredients. Now we're at the tea aisle. Now I do drink uh, uh, green tea regularly. I have about you know, one or two uh, cups of tea a day. Very important you get this organic. You cannot obviously wash these leaves off. If they're sprayed with anything, they end up in your tea. So Tezo, I'll I don't know if you pronounce that, or Tazo. That's a pretty good company. Um, everything's organic in there. Uh, I have no issues with this brand. Um, it, I think I, I think it's one of the very good ones. You know, price here, I think, is less important because how much of this do you usually use, you know? I think this lasts for a long time and um, definitely fine brand. Now, coffee. I do not buy organic coffee. I did a video about it. I don't think it's necessary. I know everybody tries to scare us about it. But uh, coffee is sprayed with herbicides, pesticides, yes. And there's mold in both organic and regular coffee, but it burns off during the roasting process. Both of them are not a big issue, in my opinion. I get espresso. I like that. So just get a cheap one. It's just 100% espresso, and I wouldn't worry about contaminants in that one. Um, you can always spend more money, but again, I think that's a bit fear-mongering, honestly. Cereal aisle, very easy one. Stay away. <laughs> There's nothing good in here. It's high fructose corn syrup. It's um, artificial food colors. It's BHA, BHT. It's all the chemicals you don't want, and they market it to children, even if they try to make them look healthy. I do buy oatmeal. Sometimes my kids do eat oatmeal. It's very important to get that organic. They tested Quaker oats, and they had the highest glyphosate content. It's nuts. So organic will have less. It won't have none because these fields are adjacent usually. But as you can see on the label, all that's in there is organic whole grain rolled oats, and that's it. And so pretty simple and uh, fairly cheap. So definitely buy organic when it comes to these um, oats. You know, oats and grains must be organic in my opinion. Tiny bit more expensive, but not a huge deal, really. Cooking oils. All these seed oils you see on here, they call them vegetable oils, seed oils. We call, call talking about soybean, canola, sunflower, safflower. Terrible. High omega-6. Don't buy these. I cook with either avocado oil, and it has to be 100% avocado oil. That's a great company has chosen. To, so they tested at UC Davis a bunch of avocado oils, over 100 different samples, and 80% of them were cut with cheap oils. They were not 100% and they were expired. This one was 100%, was uh, not rancid, not oxidized, was a great oil. So this was one of the few ones that did very well. Not cheap, but you don't need a lot of it. I would rather use less oil, um, but not buy this cheap crap. Olive oil is very expensive. This is a really good company for extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin means it's the first press. Um, and this one is an excellent one, uh, Olive Branch. It's from uh, California. And of course, it's just 100% extra virgin olive oil. Um, so nothing else in there. So definitely a good one, but very expensive. And I would only use small amounts of this. But for high temperature, avocado oil is great, in my opinion. It works extremely well. But again, look at the price, nuts. Yeah, don't buy these cooking sprays. That's terrible. I do use coconut oil. I usually buy it in glass bottles. I didn't buy this one because it's all in plastic. You don't want to buy oils that sit in plastic bottles because the plastic easily gets dissolved by the oil. Like dissolves like, you know, not good. All right, pancake mix. Now, I don't make a lot of pancakes. Sometimes I use uh, a protein powder, eggs, and milk and put a little bit of pancake mix like this one, the uh, birch benders it's called. 
uh, organic uh, pancake mix. You don't, don't need a whole lot of it in there because you got the protein powder in there. But here it's important, again, because it's made from uh, wheat that you have this organic. Otherwise, it's sprayed with glyphosate. Organic uh, wheat flour and most of these ingredients are organic. You don't need a whole lot of it. But if you make pancakes, I would highly recommend something like this. And therefore, because you don't need a lot, I think the price is not as important, you know. Um, but that's a good company. Okay, we're at the meat aisle. Now, I don't buy a lot of meat anymore. Ralph's is fairly reasonable, but, you know, steaks and all that is crazy expensive. I don't buy good cuts of meat that are very expensive. But what I do buy lately is something like carne asada. It's also called flank steak, and that's a very good one. It has some connective tissue. It has a very good flavor. It's marbled. And look at this one. Yes, usually on sale for this is seven ninety nine per pound, which I think is reasonable. Um, the regular price was a bit much, I thought, but it's usually on sale. And that's uh, very good quality. Uh, my kids like this one as well. Um, and, you know, again, carne asada or flank steak really is the same thing here. The chips, most of these, unfortunately, are made with soybean canola oil. They're fried in it, and they're made from corn, which is GMO. Not great. Also, potatoes are sprayed. But this company called Siete, they do make them with potato and corn, but these, this is an interesting chip that Siete makes, and it's made with cassava flour. And cassava flour is very different. So you see the ingredients here when we're going we're gonna to zoom in here in a second. Cassava blend, which is cassava flour, cassava starch, and then they use avocado oil, which is fantastic. Now, avocado oil uh, is much, 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 much better to use when you make these chips than when you use soybean and canola, and so these are good. But, of course, they're expensive. Um, this is not a health food. Obviously, it's a snack. It's something that you do once in a while. Six bucks, a lot. I mean, it's a lot of money, I must say, for one bag. But, um, again, when you use it occasionally, every week or couple of weeks, I think that's fine, and I would definitely go for that. I would not buy any of those other chips that are soaked in seed oils. So frozen strawberries and frozen blueberries, that's a staple in my protein shake. I use it every morning. It has to be organic. These fruits, especially strawberries, are heavily sprayed. When you buy it frozen, it's cheap and it doesn't spoil because I always make the mistake of uh, buying fresh uh, organic strawberries and blueberries. They're very expensive, and then they go bad, so this is a good choice. Eggs, I have about three to four eggs every day. I used to get the real pasture-raised eggs, and now I'm too cheap for that. I'm going with um, cage-free or free-range eggs now. And when you look here, cage-free, I mean, this <laughs> it's still not a great existence for the, for the chicken, but it's a lot better than in the cage. They're fine. 18 eggs here, which I think is fairly reasonable. For 18 eggs, you're paying $5. Um, that's not bad. And that's what I usually go for. Or these cage-free organic eggs, a little bit more expensive. But look at this one here. 12 eggs for, what is this one here? Usually $8. That's um, 66 cents per egg. That's insane. Yeah, so I don't buy that anymore. I think that's just not justified. Um, Greek yogurt, great source of protein. Uh, no fat in the 0%. Uh, very little um, carbs. And look at this one. 16 grams of protein in 150 grams of yogurt. They usually have bigger ones. I couldn't find them on this one. I buy the big tubs of this. And I definitely have about one cup to two cups a day from this. It's a great source of protein. It's fantastic. You can put blueberries in there or strawberries, um, <clears throat> and it's really good. Milk. Now, this is a bit tricky. Ralph's didn't have great milk. Now, I do buy some lactate because I don't tolerate lactose very well. That is not grass-fed milk. It's not the best milk, um, but I buy it. I put a little bit of my shake. For my kids, I'm trying to buy at least organic milk. That means that there's part of the year cattle is fed grass outside, and they do not feed them uh, corn that has been sprayed with glyphosate. So they don't use GMO sprayed corn. They, it has to be organic. So it's a bit more expensive, but um, <clears throat> it is not significant. And you know, you drink about they drink about one or two glasses of milk a day, so it's not a huge amount. The best thing here, and this was not at Ralph's, this was, a, it was at a different store, grass-fed milk. That's grass-fed year-round. Um, very good milk, organic grass-fed, fantastic. Um, you can buy A2 milk. Some people like that, but I, the difference to A1 is not very big in my opinion. So if you can find this grass-fed milk, I would prefer that. Okay, off to the butter aisle. Now, Kerrygold, as you can see here, fantastic brand. I buy that frequently. It's very expensive, and it got so expensive right now that I switched to a different brand. Look at that one. So this one here is simple truth organic again. Here is uh, 39 cents per ounce. I thought it was reasonable, so I did buy that one. But you look at Kerrygold, 81 cents per, per ounce. That's insane. So anyway, that's that's a, that's a big difference. Almost. So I did not show the fruit and vegetable section here, but that's pretty straightforward in my opinion. I usually buy, as mentioned before, frozen uh, blueberries and strawberries that are organic, and that's very cheap. Doesn't go bad, you know. And I put that in my protein shake. 
not great to defrost because they're going to get a bit, you know, uh, uh, soggy, so they don't taste too good there. But, you know, if you buy uh, fruit or vegetables, if you can uh, peel them, then I would buy regular because it's a lot cheaper. If you can't peel them, like berries, for example, I would definitely buy organic because they are definitely sprayed with herbicides and pesticides and things that you don't want to put in your body. So that's an easy one uh, to weed out. Very expensive. Everything has uh, gotten extremely expensive. So, again, for the uh, fruit, that is, um, of course, a great part of our diet. And, you know, we have to be really careful and selective there. That's why I do like the uh, frozen fruit there. All right, so if this was uh, helpful, please um, subscribe and leave a comment or question. I would, I would really like to know uh, what kind of items you're buying and what you're watching out for and what ingredients you're trying to avoid.